Welcome to the second video, who is at risk for gastroesophageal cancer. In the first video, we talked about what and where is gastroesophageal cancer. And here we'll be looking at where in the world are people at risk for the various subsets of gastroesophageal cancer, and what are some of the known and unknown uh, associated factors leading to a higher risk of getting this cancer. Taking a step back, you see here the leading causes of death in the United States, and you can see that cancer is the second leading cause of mortality. This is thought to soon surpass heart disease in the coming years. Taking it aside, you can see then why the COVID-19 pandemic was such a concern and that it uh, shot up to being in the top three causes of mortality in the United States in just that first year. I think with the introduction of vaccines uh, and other measures, you can see that there is a plateauing of this, thankfully, and hopefully this will decline. Uh, in contrast to, say, influenza, which annually causes about 50,000 uh, deaths. In this table, what you see are the leading causes of cancer death by age and gender, top uh, male and bottom female, and then you can see the columns and categories by age. So the first thing you see is that generally uh, cancer risk is higher in, as you get older. Um, although there is a trend to an increasing incidence in younger patients, and, and there was a dedicated video for that. The next thing you see uh, is that gastric cancer, norosophageal cancer are listed here in the top uh, five um, for either gender. Um, you can see that the ranges are around 18,000 per year uh, for liver and up to almost 80,000 for lung. Um, however, when you recall in the previous video, we talked about how I think of these cancers as one entity, particularly adenocarcinoma. And in the United States, um, these are the majority of cancers. Um, you will see, uh, particularly for males, that um, incidence is, is getting up into the top five. So here you do see the incidence of, of gastric cancer and esophageal cancer uh, and mortality. And you can see there uh, the numbers and globally, uh, taken together, gastroesophageal cancer is the fourth highest incidence and second highest cause of cancer mortality. So significant global health problem. Now, taking each of the three main subgroups of gastroesophageal cancer in turn, starting with first gastric non-cardio adenocarcinoma, you can see here the distribution globally and the darkest purple being high incidence countries and the, the lightest um, being low incidence. And you can see that for gastric non-cardiac cancer, um, there is a really high incidence in Asia, um, classically China, Korea, Japan, um, where it's their top cancer, and uh, also in South America, and less so in Western Europe, Northern Europe, and uh, North America. In contrast, gastric cardiac cancer, so the top of the stomach, you can see the incidences are still high in Asia, uh, and South America, but also uh, increasing and high in, um, in North America and in Western Europe. Similarly, for esophageal and G-junction adenocarcinoma, uh, this trend persists, and you can see high incidences in North America, uh, in Asia still, South America, Western Europe, and, and um, Australia. Then when you go up to the esophagus squamous cell, though, it sort of mirrors the, the appearance of the incidence graph of gastric non-cardiac cancer, where the incidences aren't as high in North America and, um, and Australia. So when you look at countries um, that have a higher incidence of the adenocarcinoma subgroup of esophageal cancer compared to squamous cell, that's noted in green. North America, Western and Northern Europe, and Australia and New Zealand have, have a higher incidence of adenocarcinoma. And this is definitely what we see in the clinics in, in the United States, where a majority of patients will have adenocarcinoma. When you look at a heat map in the United States, you can see that there are areas that cluster at high incidence or hotspots, uh, shown here in red, in, in the Midwest, Northeast, um, and in the West Coast and the Bay Area. In this table, you see the incidence and mortality rates um, of, of various cancers by race and ethnicity in the United States. And you can see the incidence of stomach cancer and the mortality of stomach cancer, while 
not as high as some of the higher incidence uh, cancers like colon cancer, breast cancer. Um, it is still high. And again, we have to remember this is not including the G-junction or esophagus. It's, this is only stomach. We also see that the higher incidence in males, more than double compared to females. And then finally, you see that there is a, a much higher incidence or double in uh, specific ethnicities compared to non-Hispanic uh, whites. So, so non-Hispanic Blacks, Asian Pacific Islanders, and Hispanic have higher incidences. So higher incidence in males, higher incidence um, in th these ethnicities for gastric non-cardiac cancer. The incidence uh, of stomach cancer has been slowly declining and its mortality, as you see on the left. In contrast, you see that the uh, incidence of mortality, at least when you take together adeno and squamous cell for esophagus, seems relatively flat over the years. However, if you parse that out and you look at each of the histologic subroutes independently, you see that first the squamous cell shown here in gray has been declining over the last decades, and that has um, been in parallel with a decreasing smoking incidence, a known risk factor for esophageal squamous cell cancer. In contrast, what you see is a, a sharp increase in the esophageal adenocarcinomas, again, mirroring in parallel with this increase in the obesity in, uh, incidence uh, and other things like diabetes and metabolic syndrome. So while taken together, esophageal cancer seems relatively flat, there has been an epidemiological shift in terms of squamous cell to adenocarcinoma over the decades. So what is and who gets cancer? You can see, um, again, we talked about what is cancer in the previous video. It's a mass of abnormally dividing cells that are dividing uncontrollably, and if left in place over time, will eventually uh, obtain the characteristics to be able to spread to distant places from where it started. Um, but who gets cancer? Well, there are a number of known um, risk factors and associations um, that can cause cancer and, and gastroesophageal cancer. However, there are a lot of situations where we just can't pinpoint a known uh, factor. Known factors, though, starting with genetics or family history or an inherited problem, uh, include a number of syndromes that are listed here. Um, overall, for gastroesophageal cancer, these make up less than 5%, these known inherited um, factors, but they are real, and we're going to focus in other videos on the top two, which are more common, uh, hereditary diffuse type gastric cancer, which is a mutation in a gene called CDH1, and HNPCC, also known as deficient mismatch repair or microsatellite instability high. And again, we'll be focusing on those two uh, subgroups. For the inherited germline, which we call um, an inherited germline uh, uh, problem in a gene, most for gastroesophageal occur in the gastric non-cardia, so the, the third component of gastroesophageal cancer. So the majority then, though, are not inherited or, or pinpointed to be an inherited problem, but rather are thought to be acquired through one's lifetime through various exposures, uh, lifestyle, uh, drinking, smoking, etc. And we're going to talk about them and how there are specific ones for each of the three main subgroups of gastroesophageal cancer. So again, taking each in turn, starting with gastric non-cardiac adenocarcinomas, a known uh, cause of this type of cancer is called Helicobacter pylori infection, which is a bacterial infection that causes inflammation in the stomach that we refer to as gastritis. And um, this is uh, more common in Asia, and, and hence why this type of cancer is very high there. Um, and then there are other known environmental carcinogens like nitrates or nitrosamines, which were found in deli meats, less so now, and, and uh, other things like asbestos and other chemicals. Um, again, because of the recognition of H. pylori and its treatment, and also exposures to these, uh, these carcinogens, which we've been able to avoid, we believe that this is contributing to that slow decline in incidence of gastric non-cardiac cancer. What we see here is in the United States by ethnicity, although there are higher incidences by ethnicity as we showed you, um, with uh, whites being in red at the lowest, for all ethnicities, we've seen this gradual decline in incidence of gastric cancer non-cardia over the last decades. And an interesting study looked at um, people from native uh, Asian countries like Korea, 
versus their counterparts living in America or born in America and their incidences. And you can see that for each of these uh, countries, the native uh, uh, Asians seem to have a higher incidence and in, uh, mortality rates compared to the, their counterparts in America. So this suggests that although there may be some underlying genetic component um, predisposing um, these ethnicities to this cancer, this suggests that there is uh, potentially an environmental exposure that seems to be higher in the native countries. So moving now um, backwards up the stomach into the esophagus at the esophageal gastric junction nanocarcinomas, we can see here again, this is the one that's increasing incidence in, in the West and in the United States. And um, it is associated with chronic acid reflux, Barrett's uh, metaplasia, which we talked about in the previous video. And this is increasing and associated with uh, Western diet, Caucasian, obesity, sedentary lifestyle, chronic reflux, diabetes, and, and males. And then finally, just to round it out, um, we see esophageal squamous cell, which again, we note that is decreasing in incidence known to be caused, uh, the majority of which are smoking and, and alcohol, heavy use of these. And because the decrease in use of those uh, factors, we've noted a decreased frequency of this uh, type of cancer. So in this video, we talked about who is at risk for gastroesophageal cancer uh, globally uh, based on these three main subgroups of gastroesophageal cancer and what are some of the known associative factors, whether it be inherited or germline or acquired um, through one's lifetime. In the upcoming video, we'll be talking about the biology of cancer, why we get cancer, and that cancer is a problem in the DNA. And then we will uh, focus on two uh, subtypes of um, inherited uh, gastric cancer, um, e cadherin CDH1 mutation or diffuse type gastric cancer and um, deficient mismatch repair MSI high. Stay tuned. Thank you.